Well, uh, we just got back from South Dakota about a week ago and uh, getting ready to turn around and, and head down to the deep south on a trip that I am incredibly excited about. Uh, but I wanted to make mention of something real quick. On our way back from South Dakota, and we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic right now, and it has made travel a little bit strange. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had several gas stations and other places that I mean, wouldn't even let us in uh, unless we were you know, wearing masks and such. And I've had some questions about you know, staying safe while traveling or if I should even be traveling at all uh, during this time. So I wanted to show a few things that I'm doing to kind of armor up and, and stay safe during this time. Now, of course, the, the one thing you're hearing about more than anything right now are masks. Uh, so went and got stocked up on some gear from Origin. They make a super lightweight mask that's, that's really comfortable to wear. Uh, the one thing you're not hearing people talk about as much, though, is maintaining your own personal health. Uh, so, also picked up uh, some Cold War and also a little bit of D3 uh, from Origin Labs. Uh, vitamin D is supposed to be really good in helping kind of armor up your defense, uh, you know, against the coronavirus. And then, you know, got some exercise gear that, that I'm taking with me, uh, like that. Oh, it's. It's called the burden. It's kind of like a, a kettlebell that you can travel with. Now, I'm not a doctor at all, but those are just a few things that we're doing to stay healthy and to stay safe. Now, we're getting ready to head out and, uh, and move south, and it's quite appropriate that today I'm wearing my We the People shirt because we are going to be going to the grave of a wartime president that I think has largely been forgotten. So every once in a while, I get these strange ideas in my head. You know, different things that I would like to see or goals that I would like to set for myself. I've seen the graves of John F. Kennedy, William Howard Taft, and Andrew Jackson. And I got to thinking, how cool would it be to go and visit the grave of every single deceased U.S. president? Well, today, I am at the state capital of Tennessee in Nashville, which is the final resting place of our 11th president, James K. Polk. Before we get up to Polk's grave, happened to walk up on this and was kind of wondering what was going on, looked kind of interesting. These are columns from the old Capitol building that were quarried from local limestone, built in 1850, but uh, in the 1950s, they started deteriorating and had to be replaced. And they decided to keep the pieces right here on the Capitol ground. I appreciate that, that's kind of cool. Look at this little guy. I don't even know if this one can fly yet. Hey buddy. Whoa. He can hop. <laughs> this is kind of cool uh, here at the Capitol. They have a uh, monument looking at the legacy of music here in Tennessee. So rock and roll, Elvis is, is from Tennessee. Of course, we're in Nashville, so country's a big deal. You also have the blues in this state, gospel music, bluegrass. Yeah, a lot of rich music history here in Tennessee. Now, here at the Capitol, they also have a statue and monument to another Tennessee native, Andrew Jackson, who we all know is a fairly controversial figure. We saw his grave in another one of the videos. Yeah. Here is the statue of another president from Tennessee, Andrew Johnson, who is widely regarded as one of the worst presidents ever, so we may tackle him another day. Now, whenever I say James K. Polk, 
people might first think, who? Okay, well, Polk was the 11th president, and one of the, the keystones of his election in 1844 uh, was the annexation of Texas. So a lot of broad national expansion occurred during Polk's administration. Uh, he was president during the Mexican-American War, also was president whenever uh, the U.S. acquired the Oregon Territory, and he is buried right here at the Capitol in Nashville, Tennessee. So, like I said, here are the mortal remains of James Knox Polk. As I mentioned, he was elected in 1844, and like I said uh, earlier, the, the biggest issue in that election was the annexation of Texas. And as was the case with many uh, issues of the day, it all revolved around slavery. If Texas came in to the Union, it would be so as a slave state, and that, that was a uh, big controversy. Polk was a Democrat, so of course he was pro-slavery and ran on uh, expanding the uh, U.S. borders by the annexation of Texas. Huh. Pretty cool. And then his, I'm going to go over here on the other side, his, uh, his wife Sarah Childress Polk is buried here as well. Interesting. And go over on this side too. It says his life was devoted to public service. He was elevated successfully to the first places in the state and federal governments, a member of the General Assembly, member of Congress, and chairman of the most important congressional committees, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Governor of Tennessee, and President of the U.S. I think that Polk is the only person who was president who uh, had prior been uh, Speaker of the House, I think, but I'm not positive on that. Yeah, so there you go. Well, that was the grave of James K. Polk, uh, who, like I said, was our 11th president and uh, yeah, oversaw a lot of expansion of our national borders. All right, I wish that I had more time here in Nashville, but we've got a schedule to keep. Got a lot of different places that we're going to be going on this trip into the South. So uh, yeah, we're off to the next place.